Okay, so maybe we can start slowly while people are coming in. Uh, happy Sunday, everyone. Uh, I am Amélie. I am the university recruiter for Unity Technologies in Montreal. Uh, we are here with you. Uh, we are like a small delegation of co-workers here with you at this uh, QSEC conference. So first of all, thank you very much for hosting us. Uh, it's the second year that we are present at this conference. Uh, we would have loved to uh, see you again uh, in person this year. Uh, of course, it's a special time, uh, but we are really happy to be here, even if it's virtual. Uh, we have already had the opportunity to meet with a few of you, but we didn't. Ha we have not had the opportunity yet to present more about the company, the new technologies that we developed here at Unity in Canada, but also elsewhere in the world. Uh, so today, um, if after the presentation you want to speak with more recruiters at Unity in Montreal, you can either contact myself, but also you can see on your screen, uh, I have colleagues here, uh, Jessica Abel, who is a, a university recruiter as well for the Vancouver office, uh, Calgary and Port Coquitlam. And Adela uh, is also a colleague of us, and she can also help and give more information about the internship program here at Unity. And today the presentation will be uh, done by our dear uh, Pierre-Paul Giroux, who is the director of gameplay at Unity and is one of the not the oldest in here, but one of the first employees here of Unity in Montreal. So he knows a lot about the company, a lot about the studio, a lot about the technologies. And after his presentation, uh, there will be time for a Q&A. So please don't be shy to ask any questions. We really want to engage a conversation with you today. And just to finish this uh, session, I will just recap a little bit about the student program if you want to ask questions as well about the internship. But the core of the presentation right now is really on the Unity story uh, by Pierre Paul. So uh, I will let him uh, start. All right. Um, thank you, Amélie, uh, for this presentation. Um, so I'm Pierre Paul, I'm a director of gameplay. Uh, I'll quickly start, you know, a little bit about me. I, 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 I don't want to be the center of attention. I, I just want to uh, inform you guys of, of who I am. So I manage the gameplay group. Uh, the, the gameplay group is a group uh, based in Montreal, but also in, in Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, and it consists of uh, everything that is animation, uh, visual scripting, audio and video, and uh, the timeline uh the timeline feature that we have in unity um as amidi said i'm a i'm an old guy here i've been here for um a little bit more than nine years uh, i came through uh, an acquisition so i had a small startup company uh with two two colleagues of mine it was called making um and we, we we joined unity as part of this acquisition and because unity uh, we wanted to have a new animation system, so uh, and we were doing it. Mechanium was a, a, a middleware uh, for uh, animation software, so we got acquired, and then uh, our animation system that we had uh, became the new uh, Unity animation system. Uh, so that was nine years ago. So if you look at the, this room uh, that I'm sitting in now, is the actual original uh, Unity Montreal, Unity Canada. Uh, headquarters. So we, I actually worked uh, from my basement uh, for the first two years, and this was the, the headquarters of Unity Canada. At that point, uh, we were a little less than uh, 200 people worldwide, so it was quite a, 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 a small company, a small startup. Uh, I'm talking about Unity, not Mechanium. So Unity was a small company. We were the first three in, in Montreal. And right now in Montreal, I think we're somewhere over 600, 700 employees. It changes every week, uh, and confinement did not stop us from, from growing the studio bigger and bigger, but I think we're around, and, uh, and Jessica and Amelie, correct me if I'm not giving the straight numbers, but I think the Montreal office is around 700 uh, people right now. Um, uh, I'm based in Montreal, as I said, uh, uh, and I studied that at the uh, Polytechnic. So uh, the short short thing that I want to add here, uh, my last year at Polytechnic, I was introduced 
um, to some uh, a, a guy named André Gauthier, uh, which had a startup called Kedara that, that did Motion Builder and the, the X-File format. So uh, my end of study project was with, with André Gauthier. Uh, that was like something like almost 20 years ago. And um, André today is the head of uh, Unity Canada, the head of the studio and is my boss. Uh, and I met him uh, when I was in school and we built that relationship. And now we're, we're still working and, and enjoying, I hope. It's, it's two direction, but uh, I, I still enjoy working with, with Andre that I met uh, when I was in school. Uh, so what is Unity? Unity is the world leading platform for creating and operating interactive real-time 3D content. Um, we uh, believe that the world is a better place with more creators in it. So the, this is a thing that we keep repeating ourselves every day. This is something that drives us. This is, uh, we, everyone that works here strongly believe in that. Uh, uh, and this is why the work that we're doing, and, and, and note that I'm not, you know, I'm not using the word uh, game creators because uh, the, the more we grow, the more, and you'll see during the presentation, uh, it becomes so much more uh, than our original uh, uh, our original ideal that was about uh, games. Um, so this the all the work we're doing is to enable uh, more creators. Either it is you know small indie shop, uh, big studio, uh, students, uh, kids. Uh, uh, we want everybody that has an idea to be able to express it. Uh, using the suite of, of, of tools and technology that we're providing. Uh, so what is uh, real-time 3D? So, uh, you know, the world is changing. Uh, it used to be, you know, uh, static 2D uh, content. Uh, now it's changing. It's becoming more dynamic. Our users are changing. Uh, you know, I, I often say uh, the AAA of today will be the mobile of tomorrow. If we look at the quality we have today on our cell phone, uh, this is what we had on PS2, PS, PlayStation 2, P PlayStation 3 a couple of years back. So our users are changing. Uh, we have VR, AR that are coming in uh, slowly but strongly. And I, 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 we believe that this will have a, a solid impact, again, wider than, than gaming. Uh, and, and the tools that people are, are used to build those interactive experiences are often inadequate. Um, so uh, what is interactive real-time 3D? So it stays, so you see here that there's a there's a AR exper experiment here where it, it comes from a static image that you can actually add interactivity in there. In this case, we're buying a chair or trying a chair in our environment. Uh, there's real-time, so you see this uh, nice environment. Uh, now we can actually uh, tweak that inside you know with nice visualization and and tweak the scene uh, without the need to you know uh, wait for a fine rendering so everything is is real time and uh, yeah this this is the part that is the most obvious and it's it's 3d right so that's real time 3d uh, so we're we're you know i think that most people in this room would say would think that uh, unity is mostly uh, the unity editor uh, which is the thing that that you know when when you think Unity, you think of the the editor, the tool that you download that allows you to build game. Uh, but we're 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 more than that. So we we just uh, released uh, Reflect a couple months back. Uh, Reflect was done. Uh, uh, most of Reflect, I believe, was done in the in the Montreal office. So uh, this allows to bring uh, uh, 3D content from from architecture application inside of, of a of a viewer that is. Uh, Unity runtime engine based uh, that allows very efficient view of complex uh, 3D uh, BIM uh, models. Uh, but the other part is that is out of the create solution, which is the operate. So, uh, you know, when you when you build a game, when you you build a, an experience, uh, there's that part where you actually create the experience, but there's the part where you need to operate it. And more and more, you'll see uh, businesses are investing in that because this is. Uh, often how you you how you pay for the you know the bread and butter on your table so uh, we're also helping our users there so we have uh, user acquisition and monetization so uh, there's ads in there of course there's end user engagement uh, and there's the cloud operation to actually you know run stuff uh, 
I say stuff, but you, we'll talk about it a bit later, but to actually uh, run your game uh, or your services in the cloud. And all of that is has the, the same backbone, which is the Unity uh, runtime engine. So let's talk a bit about create. A uh, couple, uh, for me, this, these are uh, insanely exciting numbers. And this is also something that, that drives us, is that insane number of, of people that are actually working with the stuff we're building. So um, we're on 20 plus different platforms. So you build your game. Um, and I'm looking at the, I'm trying to look in the background if there's a couple of things that I can point out. But you know, Super Hot, uh, that's the game here I'm pointing up. Uh, Super Hot was a game built for PC and then it was released on Xbox and then it's, it, it's released on, on VR. Uh, I played it on, on the Quest recently. It's, it's pretty cool that you can actually build your game in, in one, uh, editor and actually deploy it to 20 plus uh, different platforms. We're, uh, we have uh, 1.5 million monthly active creators. So this means that there's a million and a half people that open the Unity editor and that build a real-time 3D application with it. This is staggering. Uh, the, the, and this is something that drives us where, you know, we're we're building that and people are using it. Millions of people are using the tools and technology we're building right away. This is uh, quite exciting. Uh, we're powering uh, more than half of the top thousand mobile game on, on Apple and on Google Play. So uh, again, I've been here for a long time and th this, these kind of slides uh, still get me uh, quite excited and quite proud of the work we're, we're doing at Unity. Uh, so you see the again this is expressing where we can we can deploy uh, real time interactive 3d application so this is this is a list of that it's it's always changing it's obviously it's always growing uh, we actually uh, have support for the the that was the first thing we did recently so there was new new console playstation 5 xbox series x that came out uh, for christmas and we were uh, available on those platforms from the from the get go so this is also some quite exciting achievement that we're doing. Um, couple games, uh, and this is, uh, so Call of Duty Mobile, this is exciting that you can actually uh, play Call of Duty uh, uh, on your mobile phone and it's Unity Powered Arena of Valor, of Valor sorry. I'm, I'm, as you can see, my I have a French accent uh, and Mario Kart Tour. So this was also a, a, a very cool thing for me. Uh, you, when you play Mario Kart on your cell phone, it's actually powered by Unity. It's actually powered by work that we're doing uh, as as you know, um, Unity uh, developers. Uh, XR is is a big thing. You you certainly that you heard of that that little thing called uh, Pokemon Go. Uh, this was uh, built with Unity. This was a, a very a big AR experience, a very mainstream experience uh, that that was quite and is still quite popular. Uh, Coca Cola application, uh, Doctor Zeus. Uh, so XR is, is 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 getting there. It's not it's not. Completely, I would say Pokemon Go is a good example of a very mainstream experience. Uh, it's it's not everywhere yet, but it's growing, and and most of the of the XR uh, application that you see are built with with Unity as well. Uh, and also that that's the interesting part is that we're actually going in those non gaming industries. So I talked about it a bit earlier, uh, and and strangely because you know when I started a while back, uh, this was not part of of our goal, right? Uh, and it actually became important for, for us because people were asking for it. People were from the, the media and entertainment industry. They were like, they were like, well, well, why would I want to uh, work with the software that takes hours to render while I could do it in Unity and just render it in a couple of seconds, right? So, uh, and this is why we have people like Disney, like Pixar that are starting to, to, to work with us and to, and to build application uh, more efficiently, but not application, but uh, uh, entertainment pieces with, with our software because it's more efficient, it's more delightful. Um, AEC, architecture, engineering, and construction. Uh, when you think of XR and, and construction, it, it's crazy the thing that you that you can build. You can when you if you if you use a bit of imagination, you can imagine actually seeing through walls. If you can connect uh, the plan of the building to your to your to your cell phone to your pad and do that in XR so that you can actually hook the visualization of the of the internals of the wall 
uh, through a camera, uh, the possibilities are, 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 are insane. Uh, same for automotive transformation and manufacturing, uh, ATM. Uh, th these people, they saw what we can do in game. They saw how easy it is to pick up and build interactive uh, stuff with Unity. And they, 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 I say they called us, you know, they, they wanted to use Unity. And this is why it actually became a business. We call that the, the vertical business, which is uh, what is non-game. And, and also uh, very strong in, in, in Montreal and in Canada, uh, that, that, that effort at, at Unity. Um, big numbers, I like big numbers. So uh, 3 billion times uh, apps created by Unity are downloaded per month. Uh, uh, I always like to put that in relationship to the fact that I think we're around 7 billion people on earth. So uh, I, I like to put that in relationship to that 3 billion number, which is, which is just insane. Uh, so that's for, that's for create. Let's talk a bit about the part that is uh, less, less known maybe, but also, uh, Quite important. Like I said, this is what this is what brings the bread and butter to the table uh, for for developers. So uh, we started the operate initiative. I, I I'm bad with with numbers, but a couple of years back we we started that, and it, it is consistently growing. Uh, so operating with Unity. So connect and scale your game with our backend solution. So this is you know cloud initiative and, and stuff like that. Grow and acquire you new and valuable users with Unity ads. Um, engage your player with uh, personalized gameplay experiences and monetize and drive revenue while delivering great player experience. So um, if you look at, at the, the, the gaming scene these days, you see that a lot of game, particularly on, on mobile, free to play uh, with, with some elements of monetization. So uh, Unity is very strong there, ads also very strong there. Um, we, we also have a set of engineering and Gnostic uh, services to support any publisher, any title. Uh, so voice chat, uh, we, 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 a company called Vivox that we, we acquired a couple months back uh, that are doing the, the voice chat for, for Apex. Uh, so we're, we're, we're also supporting, uh, we're, at, we're, we're providing services that also work uh, with the other engines. And, and it, it, it's fine because, uh, there's a need there, and we have solutions for, for that need. Uh, scale of agnostic services. So again, numbers here are, are, are even bigger than you know the 1.5 million user I was talking earlier about the create part, because this is where uh, we're supporting the end users. So uh, that's, that's part of VBOX that I talked earlier that we acquired. So 120 million uh, end users are, are, are communicating using our service uh, average monthly in, in 19. And, you know, I think those numbers are a bit old. Uh, I'd be curious to see how that has uh, grown in, in 20. Uh, Unity ads. Uh, so these are uh, more recent number. Uh, almost 23 billion uh, monthly ad impression worldwide. Uh, that's the number of players of games with Unity ads installed, so 2.4 billion, uh, and 164 million average daily users viewing Unity uh, ad globally. We're, we're a quite important uh, ad, ad uh, delivery system. Uh, there's also the fact that we have those cloud services. Uh, it also We also allow our users to use those, those services to test, train, and validate. So this is where uh, AI machine learning uh, jumps into, into uh, the fray, right? We have uh, some strong, we have Barracuda, we have a couple of, of strong uh, ML features that we have, and people can actually use that uh, to, you know, to have this at scale, because this is where, this is where machine learning, this is what machine learning needs. It's scale, it's big data, it's, it's all these things, and, and we can provide that with our, our, our cloud offering. Uh, let's go with a couple of company facts and figures. So uh, 190 countries and territories with Unity creators in it. That's almost, I think it's all of the world except for one country uh, that there's laws that prevent from, from using Unity legally. Uh, global presence. So Unity is an insanely distributed company. Uh, we have 45 offices around the world in 17 countries. Um, uh, Canada is becoming a, a, a big one. I think that slowly Montreal will be the second biggest office in, uh, uh, of Unity uh, next to um, San Francisco when there's Copenhagen also, that's quite big, but there's uh, new offices uh, that are uh, appearing uh, every couple months. 
uh, at Unity. So we're, uh, we know how to work distributed. This is also, you know, I'll do a side note on, on confinement. So as you see, everybody's like working from their basement these days. Uh, we were ready for that. There was actually very little disruption on the day-to-day -day work because we're already used to working with 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 different uh, different time zone, different uh, offices. Uh, you know, part of my team is based in Copenhagen, and 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 we work with them. The, the Montreal people are working as part of the same team uh, with people in Denmark. Uh, so founded in 2004. So this is a quite uh, quite young company by some standards uh funding sure millions of dollars uh and that's also interesting you know this is uh, a couple of years back we were less than 200 and now we're 3400 uh so uh we're getting uh, it's quite a big company but the, the nice thing and this is another reason why I, i've been here all those years is that it still feel uh like a, an energetic uh, startup like uh, company and this is a thing that drives um, a lot of the people that are here. We're here to make change. We're here to bring more creators in. Uh, and, and we still have this startup -y feeling, even if this number is, is quite big. Uh, number one in enterprise sector on this of top 50 most innovative company of 2019. Uh, overall on this of top 50 most innovative company uh, uh, in 2019. Uh, in 2018, we won uh, an Emmy Award. So uh, that's a thing called Baymax Dream. It's based on a big hero uh, film by Pixar. So we did uh, some short uh, working closely with, with our friends at Disney. So again, this is about uh, what I talked earlier about what we call verticals. This is media and entertainment. So we won an, an Emmy uh, that year. Uh, values. So I, I, I think it's important to talk about values uh, because we strongly embody those values. Uh, I'll, I'll go through this. Uh, I've worked, you know, I've worked in other companies where we had this uh, value exercise, and it was really, uh, you know, it was used to do posters on the wall, and it, it wasn't something that was lived and, and applied. Uh, this is not this kind of company. Those values, uh, we repeat them almost in a daily manner. Uh, it is, it is how we work. It is. Uh, 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 contract to ourselves uh, that we're living by those values. So uh, first one, uh, best ideas win. Uh, you have, I'll tell you a short story how, how this is true. Uh, a, a while back, we, we changed. I, I won't go into the details because I could go for, for long minutes about this one. But a while back, uh, the CEO announced a, a different way that we're going to do business. You know, we're going to go uh, software as a service. And this will be our pricing model and blah, blah, blah. So we, the CEO has a plan, sends a company-wide email, says this is how we're going to do it. There's one dev that replies all, replies to the whole company, and says, no, I, I think this is a bad plan, and this is why. So one guy, one developer express why it's bad. And then more people jump in and then follows in a typical Unity manner, uh, uh, you know, 100-something email on that thread uh, that lasts for a week or so. And then at the end of the week, uh, John, our CEO, comes back and says, you know, you convinced me it, it was a bad idea and we're changing that. So uh, this is best ideas win. It means that everybody has a voice. Uh, uh, and, and, and if the ideas are good, we're going to listen. We, we can change the plan. Uh, we're hiring people to help us solve problems, solve hard problems. And, the, and it needs to be it's ego-less. We're not there for the ego. We're not there to climb up a corporate ladder of sort. We're here to have more creators. And to do that the right way, it's best ideas win. Uh, in it together is also a thing that I, I keep seeing. Uh, it, it comes again with us thinking about we're, we're, we're doing that for our users. What's the best way there? And, and, and we often I see people from different teams lending a hand to another group because, oh, I feel like they need help. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go help them. Uh, this is, again, embodied. The, the, it's, it's crazy the number of times. Just in the last couple of months, the number of times I saw that in my group, uh, people, you know, going the extra mile to help somebody. Uh, somebody has a hard time with confinement, lending a hand, taking a bit of their job so that they can they can uh, sort their stuff up. So uh, it's this is really a, an in it together company. Uh, go bold. Uh, we we want to be a trailblazer. We have you know we have a big technical initiative called the data oriented tech stack. We're changing our engine. We're adding more features. We're we're trying stuff that was never tried before. Uh, this is part of our of our DNA. It's about going bold. Uh, 
And users first, I think I've said a lot about that already. Uh, we want the world with more creators in it. Uh, this, is, this is who we're working for. Uh, and this is a thing that we keep repeating ourselves. So that's our values. And, and really, uh, we, we, we live by those values. Um, how do we approach that? So it starts with empathy and, and respect. That's essential. Uh, best ideas win. Uh, the best way to do that is to actually listen to the other people in the room, to have conversation, to respect their 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 idea, their point of view. It's also about, you know, when we send opportunity, it's about going for it, making sure that we all understand that there's an opportunity and why we're doing that, and then going bold and going for the opportunity. So this is how we approach our value. Um, I've never seen a, a company drive so much towards empathy uh, that I've seen uh, unity do so it's 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 really caring about people so again i'll go quickly back to uh to confinement uh, i i remember uh john our ceo uh, having weekly call with the whole company and just saying you know guys take care of you first take care of your family first uh and and it will understand it's a hard time for a lot of people think of you think of the think of your family first so uh, uh yeah uh, empathy runs uh, through our veins Let's talk a bit about the core tech. Uh, so the unity, uh, the, the, this is part of the creators, uh, the, the creation part. So uh, unity 2021. Uh, so uh, this is where we're going bold. So for 21, uh, we're going to have uh, three strong focus. We're working on improving graphical quality. Uh, it's something called a universal render pipeline that we're doing. So uh, to be honest, you know, the other engine, Unreal, is doing a kick-ass job at graphics, and we're always seen as a bit lagging. Uh, we're, we we want to change that for 21, and our, our, our graphic solution are, are very solid. Uh, visual scripting, this is part of my of game, of gameplay group, so we're shipping uh, with visual scripting for 21. We just shipped the, the first beta uh, right before Christmas, so uh, this is a big part of, of 21. Uh, and, and, we, uh, and we're going to work on uh, the net code, so you know, multiplayer, uh, multiplayer code uh, for Unity. So this is coming for 21. Um, we always have uh, what we call a stream. Uh, so there's always two sides to Unity Engine. You can always take the one that is, this is what you generally download from the, from the, the website. This is the stable version. This is production ready. Uh, and we have the text stream, which is more in preview. So this is people who want to be trailblazer, people who want to provide us feedback on the technology we're building so that we can improve it before it goes into the uh, you know default production ready version of it. Uh, so we're right now we're doing uh, 19 LTS, so it is it is rock solid. This is I think it's the most stable Unity version uh, ever. I would I would be tempted to say. Uh, so this is where we are for LTS and 21. Uh, maybe I should have updated the, the slides a bit, uh, but. Um, we improve uh, the package manager. We uh, improve editor, team workflow, a, a lot of things that are in there. Uh, and, and very soon, because we'll start the, the next cycle for 21, 20.1 will become part of the of the, the stable stream. Uh, so sorry, I, I talked about it a bit quickly. Uh, the industry. So let's quickly, again, I talked a bit about it, what we call a vertical. So. Uh, AC, architecture, engineering, and construction. I just want to show a couple examples of, of things we're doing. So uh, shop architects, so uh, they used uh, Unity Reflect to visualize uh, the tallest structure uh, that, that is being built in, in Brooklyn right now. So again, uh, it's just a 2D picture, but uh, imagine what I'm saying is you can actually see uh, using you know uh, an AR experience, uh, an AR experience. Uh, what will the building look like? What the inwards of the building uh, will look like, uh, and all based in, in geolocalized. So, uh, pretty exciting stuff uh, for training. Also, training and and, and XR are kind of a match made in heaven. So, uh, so this is uh, I, I believe this is a Hololens. I'm not. This thing here makes me I'm not quite sure, but I think it's a Hololens. Uh, so XR uh, to do training and, and, and maintenance is is a really really uh, it's as if it's made for that. So tactile uh, are using Unity uh, to do that. Uh, ATM automotive transportation and manufacturing. Uh, so Volvo and Varjo are working with 
um, having some sort of um, you know on-screen display uh, to see uh, potential uh, danger on, on the road, uh, to see the, uh, the the ideal. You know, it's like a video game, except it's in real life. I don't know if it's a scary thing or not, but still, uh, it's the ability to visualize, think of an overhead display, and, and see uh, the road. Uh, Real-time ray tracing, so uh, we did a, 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 a nice thing with, with BMW. Maybe you've seen it, we, we did quite a push on this one. Uh, so real-time ray tracing in Unity. Uh, I think in our original campaign, it was quite hard to, to see uh, which one was the actual car and which was what the one uh, real-time ray traced in Unity. Games. Uh, Shadowgun War Games. So, uh, if you're on mobile games, uh, I think you know about Shadowgun. It's a, it's a. It, they have been with Unity uh, since I, I've been here. So, uh, in 2010, Shadowgun uh, uh, was uh, an old version was built in Unity, and they're they're still working uh, with us. Uh, so, it's pretty strong, pretty high-end mobile uh, game. Uh, Disco Elysium. Uh, I think this is one of the highest scoring. Uh, game to a 91 Metacritic, so this is uh, quite high. I think PC game of the year last year. So uh, a big thing, a throwback to the the days of, of King Quest and stuff like that. So uh, it's it's really great, insane narrative. So uh, yeah, I had uh, quite some fun to play with this one. Uh, Hard Space Shipbreaker. It's an early access, so this one I, I know a bit less of the other one, uh, but that that's something that is that is uh, happening now. And uh, Oddworld, uh, this is going to be for PS5. Uh, I've grown up playing Oddworld games, so I'm super excited to, to know that the, the next one on the next-gen console uh, will be made uh, using Unity. Uh, and you know, that's just a couple things. I'm tempted to talk about Ori. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Ori on, on Xbox. It is, it is great. It is beautiful. Uh, quite a good game. Uh, Metroid-like uh, game uh, built with Unity. Uh, there's Gree also that is uh, on mobile and on, on Switch that is also a, a great artwork. So there's there's tons of games that are built with Unity. Uh, Overcooked, the best, best party game that I played, uh, uh, that is also built with Unity. So uh, like I said, uh, this is a thing that drives us. This is when we see the what the creators are actually doing with the work we're doing. Uh, the, the the feeling is let's say it's quite good. Uh, Media and entertainment. So the Lion King. So the, there was a new Lion King movie, I believe, uh, last year, uh, and Unity was heavily used uh, to do that because it was uh, shot in VR uh, through the power of Unity. So just to be clear, uh, we did not do the final render of what you're seeing in the movie using Unity, but Unity was part of the production pipeline, which would, would help accelerate or or make. The, the, you know, when it's a 3D production like that, sometimes it's hard for, for, for filmmakers to actually feel like they're actually doing a movie in a more traditional way. So uh, we had the, the, the fact that uh, Disney used uh, Unity as a, uh, to, go, to, to shoot it in VR uh, was actually a game changer for, for these guys. Uh, and Sherman, so this you can actually uh, look it up. Uh, if this is available to, to see the short. This is an internal production uh, that we, we did with the people that helped uh, build Baymax Dream, uh, it, the fur in there, it's its insane. So uh, again, powered by Unity. The final renders are done in Unity and Sherman. So uh, if you have time, please go take a look. It, it's, it's available on, on YouTube. Uh, XR, uh, Dr. Zeus. Uh, so uh, again, AR experiment uh, experience uh, uh, with Unity. Uh, Spotify AR, so we're actually changing the playlist as you change your location. Uh, so that's that's also a thing that is uh, built with Unity. And uh, Drop in the Ocean, it's a celebrity back VR. I haven't seen this one, uh, but it shed light on, on, on plastics in the ocean. So there's a social element to it that is uh, quite great. Uh, and, and, and it worked with uh, Philippe Cousteau, uh, the grandson of a uh, famous uh, Jacques Cousteau. So, that's it for, for my presentation today. Uh, I think we should still have time for a question. Do we have time, Amelie? Do. And Great. I invite the students to come join us at the booth later to talk about internships. And let's ask some questions to you, Pierre Paul. 
uh, it's two, it's seven past two, and we end at, at uh, 15. So we have a few minutes. Uh, there was a question about what advice would you give to people like a student uh, who would like to develop some of the necessary skills to when they work on a similar innovation, innovative projects, I guess, uh, on the different technologies that we develop here at Unity. So, I, you know, I, I don't hold the absolute truth, okay? But I, I what I can do is uh, tell, a, a, I'll, I'll give a bit more info on the, on the story I said earlier about that I met, uh, André, uh, which is the, the head of the studio, and this is really how it got me started in the industry. In the industry. So uh, there's actually two things that, that happened at, at the same time. So uh, when I was at, at, at university, I had, um, <laughs> again, I shouldn't look at it today because I would be ashamed, but I had uh, a side project. I had extra curriculum activities, uh, and it was, it was, it, it, it will sound dumb, but it was just grass simulation okay, that I, I, I built with a friend of mine. It was grass, grass simulation with wind plowing, and then it was, you know, all mathematical stuff. But I had a side project, and I had something that was out of what I normally do at school. And I remember when I showed that or, or talked about it with, with André, which, which, which will hire me a couple months later, uh, it was something that you, you rarely see on, on, their, on, 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 on people's resume. So it's really about, uh, and that was my my technique, right? It's it's about uh, it's about doing more than you do at school. Find something that you want to do. Find something you want to change. Something you want to improve. Something you want to learn, and work on it. Uh, generally, when when employers or potential employers see that, uh, it, it gets people uh, very interested, and, and it shows that. And you know, at Unity, I, I say that we have a cultures of of. You know, um, entrepreneurs, go-getter uh, kind of people, and and when we see people that have their own project that tried something, uh, it, it 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 really excites us more uh, to have conversation. So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing I would say is that uh, pick hard problems, pick things that that seems complicated, and and don't be afraid to tackle that. It's a thing I did with. When I started again with André, we talked about my end of studies project. He suggested me, you can try this, which is graphic, quite simple, very shiny, or you can go knee deep in mathematical function. Okay? Uh, and I was I was not that good in mathematical function. And I said with great certainty, I'll do mathematical stuff. And, and it kind of helped me. And if we look at the, it, it's funny because the code I've written uh, in those days, uh, is is now code that is run on every unit when when you bring a 3d model in unity the code that i wrote at university 20 years ago still run and and, and it's been integrated in tons of software and i took a, a thing that you know that was hard complex and i worked on it for for a couple months and 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 i i think i delivered because it's still the same, same code that is used but I, I took a hard problem so i think this is also when i see people that are driven by things that seem impossible or that seem like a, a big undertaking and they're like yes we can do it uh this is uh, it goes it goes back to the go bold uh, value that i talked about earlier but uh, yeah i think that's the again i don't hold the truth uh, but that that's what i did and and it, it worked out okay does that does that answer the question i can we're not the i think so it was dominic question uh but that's true uh, like it was your personal uh experience but this is something that in general that we look for uh, we look at the different uh personal projects that you you have done uh managers will look at your github at the nature of the project how the code is done is it really well uh, is it clean is it completed uh, all the projects that you could do at hackathons challenges anything that passionates you uh, will help us discover more about yourself and about what drives you and it will help the manager to know if it's a good addition to the team to complement the other members with your own ideas and us the recruiter as well it will help us to know on which role we could support your candidacy and your application more as well um there was a question that was more about that i don't know the answer it's from rafid 
it he was wondering if uh, the best way uh, to version control games in Unity is it has better performance integration than GitHub. Correct? I'm not. I don't understand the question. I'm just uh, reading it. I'm. I guess it depends on on, on, on the scale, right? So. Uh, for me, GitHub kind of works, and I'm using it. Uh, Perforce, I haven't used it in a while, and it wasn't free in the in the old days, so I would not use uh, Perforce. Uh, we acquired uh, Plastic SCM, which is source control also, uh, that we acquired recently, that is part of the Unity family now. Uh, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't played with it yet, but it seems to me that because it is uh, part of the Unity family, it will get some some nice integration, a nicer integration into the future. Uh, so, but but then again, everybody uses GitHub. Everybody is comfortable with GitHub. So, uh, is is the uh, is the integration perfect in Unity? I don't think so. But uh, this is personally, you know, when I have when I do, you know, a project on the weekend, I would I would always use uh, GitHub. Awesome. And a question from Veronica. Uh, she's asking, well, she had a question about, uh, is that what Mechanium is? I guess it was about the nature of what was Mechanium. And she was also asking a very good question about if we, if you do experience burnout uh, solving hard problems like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll quickly I'll start with the easy one. So Mechanium, uh, it, it was the name of the company I, 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 I had with, with colleagues of mine. Uh, when it was brought in, when we integrated into Unity, uh, often we call the new animation system what's called Mechanim. But if today you go on Unity and you you animate stuff, it, it will be running on, on code that was uh, originally called Mechanim. I, I think today if we go into software, you won't see the word Mechanim. It's a branding thing we did with, with marketing and so on. But uh, the animation system in Unity now is, is Mechanim. Yes. So uh, do we experiment burnout? That's the question, right? Uh, not so much. Uh, I, I'm, I, I was allowed to say no, okay, but because there might be things I don't know. What I what I know is that in in my group, uh, I haven't seen burnout. I haven't seen people uh, being burned, uh, and the reason is uh, people are empowered uh, in our team. People, uh, we're not the type of company where the the manager comes from upstairs and says, I want this done by that day. Do whatever is needed. This is not how we run. The way we run is that manager might come from upstairs and say, listen, we have this problem. How can we solve it? And when will it be ready? That's that's how we go about things. And then, you know, there's scoping, there's way of defining the problem, there's way of setting the expectations straight. Uh, so people don't people don't get burned they get burned less with that concept where, where people are actually empowered to drive the delivery mechanism of the of the features they're working on. That being said, and this is why, you know, when we look at, we had, we had a survey recently in Montreal. Uh, if we look at the numbers for life and work balance, we're through the roof. I think we're at 90 something percent that people are highly satisfied with the life. So th this is not a crunch factory by, by no mean. And the only crunch I've seen it comes from what I said earlier about uh, people are empowered. Okay, so um, that person old has a feature to do. She 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 owns the feature. She pushes it, uh, and she realizes on the twentieth of December that it's a disaster and that it will break user code. Okay, uh, then old will come not because I ask old. Old will come during the weekend to sort it out so that there's no. There's not that 1.5 million user that is impacted by the bug that out did. Okay, fictional name, almost fictional situation, uh, but but that's when people tend to work over. Okay, but this is something I highly dislike. Dislike to have people you know work on weekend and work at night. Uh, it happens when there's I, the technical term is fuck up. You know when there's fuck up like that, it does happen that people do that. But I, I'm always trying to be very mindful so that they catch up the time that they, they spent on that. And, and really, really, uh, the difference between us and a, a game studio is that uh, we're, we're there for the long run. There's no such thing as we work on that game for two years and then it's done. We're working on Unity forever. 
there is no, it, it, it's continuous work. It doesn't begin, it doesn't end. It's just, we work for unity. If we go into that mode where we start to do like, you know, I read about, you know, Cyberpunk uh, CD Projekt Red that crunch people like crazy. If we go into that mode at any given time, then we then we lose people. Then we, we break people. And I don't want that because we're there for the long run. And, you know, the, the, we, we're not losing people. People are not losing. I, I will speak for Montreal, certainly. People are not leaving uh, the Montreal office. We have a very low level of attrition because uh, we strongly believe that, that our team is there for the long run. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for saying it, but I, I, but I strongly you know, and and when we when I see that this becomes less true at different you know point in time, uh, I I get involved personally so that it doesn't stay like that because it, again, uh, the word I use is that for everyone I I want I want the setup to be sustainable. That's the word I often use. Uh, I want you to work forever at Unity, and that's that's it. And if we crunch, you don't do that. Awesome. Oh. Another question just pop up. We didn't know if the the conference the, the session would stop automatically at 15. So <laughs> if we disappear, well, uh, I don't think so. But let's uh, let's ask this other question from Mika. Uh, to be a talented game developer, in which domain do I have to focus more in creating 3D models or in using Unity API? There's I don't have an answer for that. You, the, the person that asked the question has the answer for that. Uh, this is, we're, I mean, we're, we're talking about a, a, a job, okay, uh, that you, you that, that's the way I see that, okay? So again, because I said I want people to be there for the long run, okay? Pick something that drives you. Pick something that you know, you'll do that uh, eight hours a day, uh, 40 hours a week, uh, for for many years, pick something that that drives you. Uh, I I've seen uh, tech art uh, grow and have a very successful life. I've seen programmers grow and have a very successful life. Managers grow and have, uh, but it it needs to be uh, uh, it, it needs to be your choice, right? Pick what drives you and 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 change it. Change your mind along the way. This is fine. It's normal. It's essential. Uh, but I I. I won't answer that by saying you should go to programming because programmers are better. I would I would never say that. Uh, yeah, and we do. I, I I know we're maybe a bit over time, but this is something that we do. You know, uh, often companies have you know yearly evaluation where you score yourself on you know different rate. You know, I'm I'm seven out of ten on being uh, there on time or whatever kind of thing that uh, we don't do that at Unity. We do three questions uh, and that's it. And the first question is always. Uh, what is your mission? And what we want to get out of this question is to make sure that uh, what the people are doing in their job is aligned to what they care about in their life. What is their what is their personal mission? Where what what do they what do they want to change in their world? Why do they where do they want to have an impact? And we try to organize or, or make sure or validate that uh, their personal mission there's at least some part of it that is satisfied in in, in their work and their in their daily work and it, it, we use that as a compass you know uh, when you have a down period where you're not sure that you're doing the right thing come back to I'm, I'm doing this for 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 that reason so uh, and and we do that a couple times a year to sit with every employee in the company and we ask them those questions to make sure that you're, you're still aligned and you're still feeling like you're you're working on what you think you should be working on Good. So uh, I think this is the end of the presentation. Yeah, you're welcome, Mika. Uh, I think that just to to talk a little bit more about like what should I learn, how should I be to get a job at Unity. Uh, it's true that whatever you want to do and you're the most motivated to do, you will be the best to do it and it can work in the long term and you can change as well in the future uh, and you can start as i don't know a uh, animation developer and then grow and change during your career you can just continue to do that all your career there is no one path for one person 
and uh, for there is one there is a lot of different paths that are possible uh, but the most important thing is to feel that you are doing the right thing now or in the near future so it's going to be a good thing for you uh, and you you have to set your own goals about what you want to learn, what you want to develop further. Uh, Pierre Paul talked a lot about the culture of the company. What kind of work environment are you looking for? What's important for you in your life and your and in your professional life? And when you apply to a job and, and you you can get as much information as possible about all those aspects, uh, I think it will help you find uh, the right opportunity for you as well. I have a. Can I tell? Uh, I, I I tell stories all the time, Emily. I'm sorry, but I had uh, in Denmark. Uh, I had someone in my group, uh, Arini. So she she started a company as a QA person. So she was responsible for for testing uh, audio and video, and she was so good uh, and so structured, so organized, and and had such a good leadership uh, that uh, I I I promoted her uh, to lead the engineering team. Uh, because and, and now a couple years or two after she's a dev manager of a team of around 10 people uh, because she was just a uh, kick-ass good and, and, and so and she started so there's no there's no predetermined path okay we're, we're quite uh, we're particularly at community we're quite creative on, on career path uh, people can jump on, on different trains try different stuff uh, and it's it's really and you know in that case for Arini, uh she strives in a in a leadership role like that and she she likes to drive and to to have conversation with with wider uh, wider influence at Unity uh, and she had that uh, so she actually became what she what she wanted to become and it, it, I think it's a it's a great success story that, that we had with Ahini. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and in turn of summer twenty twenty will join her team <laughs> next summer as a full time. So that's great. And it goes a bit like the, we have another question talking about moving from Montreal to San Francisco to Copenhagen. Uh, as Pierre Paul mentioned, a lot of teams are very much distributed in different locations at Unity. You can work simultaneously with people based in Montreal, San Francisco, and Copenhagen, for example, which is very typical. Uh, so Harry was asking about uh, moving around offices, how does it work? Um, okay, so times are strange these days, okay? So, and, and there might be a clearer policy around that. I would say uh, fairly easily people can, can, again, it needs to make sense. Uh, uh, we generally don't move, uh, you know, somebody that will interact with, constantly interact with people in Montreal and say, oh, I want to move to Singapore. Not the most, you know, a twelve-hour uh, time zone difference. It's it's not the most uh, e easiest thing to to justify. Uh, but but we had people, you know, moving from Copenhagen to Montreal. Uh, we have uh, Sicily in the Montreal office that she's moving uh, to Copenhagen in the next couple of weeks. So uh, we we allow that uh, if it makes sense. And uh, if that I'm saying that in the context of saying staying in the same team. But if there's opportunity in different offices, we have people from SF that move to Montreal. Uh, we have we have quite a lot of we, we you know we encourage internal mobility, uh, and this is something that I tell the the leads in my group. Uh, you don't get to you you can never block that. Even if your top person in your team tells you I want to move out to another team, you have to enable that. You you we what we want is to have people again. It's about Choosing your path, finding what you want to do, uh, we're enablers for that. Uh, I, I, we cannot block people uh, to move around and try different stuff in the company. And this is the nice thing about how distributed we are. Opportunities all over the globe, uh, different projects all over the globe. So it, it's quite feasible. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good. So uh, I think now this is a wrap. I know that like the questions, the question part is always the, the best, uh, not always, not the best, but it's a very uh, interesting part of the presentation. Thank you so much for all your good questions. Uh, it's always good to see what, what's in your mind, what are your questions, what you want to know. Uh, thank you, Pierre Paul, for uh, doing this presentation. Every time I enjoy your uh, little story and side uh, anecdotes, uh, there is always something new that I learn about Unity or about people at Unity, which I like a lot. And uh, and 
us, we will be at the boot right now. If you want to come see us and talk about the different opportunities, there is a boot for Montreal location, another with uh, myself, and there is another one with Jessica and another one with Adela. So you can come see us and talk about the different opportunities. Someone was asking if uh, Pierre Paul would be at one boot. I, I don't think so. I don't know if you will be there. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I have a family engagement, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I won't be there. But uh, yeah. Adela was just asking the question. Feel free to, to reach mm -hmm. out to LinkedIn. I'm super comfortable with that. Oh, yes, and, and me too. I, I know pretty much uh, well his group here in Montreal and the different people. So don't hesitate to come ask me uh, any questions about that. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. It was great to be present for the second time here at QSEC. And uh, I hope one day we can meet uh, in person again in, at an event, or you, we could organize a visit in person at the studio. Uh, the studio is great. Everyone wants to work at Unity when they visit the studio. <laughs> uh, so uh, happy Sunday and uh, hope to see you soon, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>